Academy of Music will be live streaming with the owner of the of uh, Toulouse Lotec Jazz Club in London to discuss firsthand how the pandemic has affected London music venues. Uh, she will also be sharing how the rehearsal uh, uh, room platform is enabling music venues in the capital to survive uh, whilst providing new opportunities for musicians. Judy will be opening the talk with a beautiful live performance with uh, accompanist Elizabeth Streichert and closing by jazz band Jay-Z Replacement featuring Zenia Strigalev on saxophone and Jamie Murray on drums.
Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, ask you guys a couple of questions. Judy, Ya Heng. Amazing. You're going to be there, <laughs> and I think... Uh, Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. I think... Uh, Hi, Great Hi, that you guys are there. We Hi, are really Hi. looking Hi. forward Hi. to Hi. hear Hi. from Hi. you Hi. how you're doing. We, had a, we, we, we have a whole uh, idea of a discussion about the clubs in London and the uh, place musicians find, find themselves these days. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, as you can see, we're jo uh, joining you from... So, guys, we can hear you. Uh, I mean, we can see you moving on one of the screens, but the other one is stuck. So then we can't hear what you're saying. Yes. Can you unmute that computer and maybe we can hear you through there? Aha. Sorry, guys. We yes, have a now we can hear you. machine in, in yeah. a separate place. Yeah, so I was just now we can. The track uh, Jazz Venue right now, which is where we're playing from, and joining us is Nolan, who's the, the owner of the club as well. So, and um, just wanted to thank him for hosting us and for being the spokesperson for, uh, for for music venues across London and across across the world, I guess, who are all experiencing this um, these pains. So, yeah, I mean, maybe we can just kick off, and Nolan, you can just explain briefly about the venue yeah, and then we'll absolutely. So I opened the Toulouse Trek uh, about 2008, November 2008. So it's been nearly 12 years that we've been open. Uh, and originally we opened as a piano bar and then uh, I think about seven years ago, that became a jazz club and we sort of delved into other genres of music. Um, so it's normally jazz, blues. We do a lot of vintage swing music um, and then we also deal with the cabaret and burlesque side to sort of support the um, LGBT community that we have in our area. Yeah, cool. And obviously really kind of troubling times for you as, a, as an owner, right? So yeah. what was life like for you and for the club like, before everything kicked off? And then how has that changed <laughs> since? Um, it's changed a lot. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's like a, it's a whole different reality. So I mean, everything's changed. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Prior to lockdown, uh, I was supposed to do a Gypsy Jazz Festival. We were supposed to launch London's very first Gypsy Jazz Festival. And um, sadly, um, that got completely cancelled. We had five great acts coming from abroad, and that didn't go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but on a regular night, we would have about 60, 70 people here. Wow. Um, and uh, we would not just do shows, but we had community events, supportive group, musical theatre, open mics. Um, but yeah, all that is um, have to come back. Yeah, so I mean, so what happened on March 16th? You just had to completely close your doors, right? Close the doors. Well, we had uh, actually a band that was booked in and um, they had flown all the way. Um, I think they were based in Denmark and they flown all the way to London. And then uh, I think it was at that time it was the same, let's do it. But then, yeah. you know, two days later it was now, well, not two days later, but they were already in London and we said, right. sorry guys. Is cancelled. Yeah. So it was gutted for, for everybody, and I just felt sorry about it, you know. Yeah. And so, what's the biggest impact on, on you as a, an owner, mm -hmm. and, and who else is you know affected? I think all jazz clubs. I mean, not yeah. just jazz, but every you know uh, music venue in, in London is affected mm -hmm. uh, sadly, and um, it's, it's it's one of the most difficult uh, industries to sort of work in, and a lot of musicians are getting affected uh, financially. Yeah, um, and uh, we're just trying to find ways to sort of get it back. And, yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing financials is the biggest, you know, yes. problem you face. Like, how have you been able to survive the past three months, four months? We can't. <laughs> we, we just have to support. You know, look at, look at our followers and just, you know, count on them. We did manage to get uh, a grant uh, this morning actually, which has helped us a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but that's only going to help us. You know, it's only going to cover half of what we've lost already yeah uh so we'll just have to see from there but uh you know i'm just raring to go and get music back on there <laughs> yeah provide exposure for all these musicians yeah you know? and, and and i'm sure you are and I'm, is there any you know uh, idea of when you might be able to open oh well, since it's uh reasonably safe i mean it's, it's great to say right because you know, i want to open as soon as possible yeah but at the same time yes i do understand we have to you know be safe you have to 
you know, ensure that we don't get another outbreak. Um, but uh, at the same time, we do want this industry not to sort of wither away, should we say? Yeah. And so you've been in complete, obviously, survival mode the past few yeah. months. Um, yeah. We're also joined with Judy, the founder of, of Mushroom. So Mushroom, uh, I'll, I'll ask you to explain in more detail and much better than I can. Um, but it's essentially providing venues and musicians with a way to adapt in, in these circumstances, right? So thanks for joining us. Thanks for that lovely performance as well. Uh, no. <laughs> and uh, yeah, maybe just explain a bit about Mushroom and, and what you guys are doing. Yeah, so I'm a musician myself. I just found it that it's really difficult when we want to rehearse, when like especially me and Ellie, like we live so far apart. Yep. But every time we want to rehearse, is uh, either I travel to her or she travels to me. So if we can always find a like place that that we can, you know, just play like with our board prize, and so that's how the idea actually started. And uh, so now we're just trying to gather as many possible rehearsal spaces, as po like not just in studios but also in churches, like. Uh, people's home as well like it's really a good thing as well to connect uh, musicians and music lovers mm -hmm. and uh, I saw once like this um, I saw the um, Save Our Venues com campaign yeah. which all the venues are running at the moment and I thought oh Mushroom could be actually a very good platform for them for the venues that is, is not not running at the moment like to rent it out for, for musicians to have rehearsals on recording or just create music carry on creating music in a way and if we have local pops like joining as well then musician doesn't really have to commute that much which is a safer option so that's just yeah so it's an incredible idea so obviously there's this is a way for men for venues to survive to adapt yeah. to the situation yeah. to generate some revenue Absolutely. of course for people to come in the toulouse lautrec uh, venue is now on Mushroom, right? So you yeah, can go yeah. on and book it. How much is it? So it's like, like 15 for everything, yeah, like 15 including pounds, backline yeah. and yeah, uh, and well, it includes piano, the piano, the drum kit, yeah, yeah, Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And Nolan comes yeah. with that as well, yeah. So, <laughs> and it, yeah, and also for musicians, right? So I don't know about you guys, but I've been stuck at home playing my same keyboard for the past four months on mm. my own, so mm. yeah, I've already planned out when I'm going to come here mm. with the other musicians to play and record and, mm. and so on. So mm -hmm. incredible initiative. Yeah. yeah. Probably we can see how, how is it going in Netherlands. Yeah. So yeah. that's the situation in London, guys. How is yeah. it over there with you guys? Well, we, we were doing the math. It was really interesting. We went on a lockdown at four days before you guys. And for a while, you guys seemed to us like a very confusing uh, example because here everything shut down on the 12th of March and there were these four days we saw you guys shopping and people were going home or staying. There was a very unclear moment with you guys. It was quite exciting. We had our premiere cancelled on the 12th of March. We were about to do the first performance with 45 people on stage and that was just a shot and we were home from one day to the other. Uh, it is now starting to recover, I have to say. The Dutch government uh, did an amazing job, uh, both in managing the crisis, but also in uh, taking care of, of almost, uh, well, most of the artists, I can say. And uh, at least in our case, we feel very protected and uh, like we have the chance to recover and wait for everything to get better. Uh, but we are a state-subsidized uh, company, and I think for the freelancers, who are independent artists, basically. It was a very different situation, but the government came in there as well. And uh, I'm hopeful the stronger companies try to make space and support the more uh, vulnerable uh, individual artists, uh, the, the, the independent artists. And um, I hope we can uh, come out of it together. Venues took a very bad hit in, uh, in Holland as well. Um, so, if you talk about clubs, they are still closed and uh, theatres are opened but with very low capacities, but clubs uh, are, I think, the last things we open. We are hoping that maybe in September they will be open again. And uh, the guys are doing what they can to survive and manage. So, uh, we are, um, yeah, I think things are moving. It feels like things are moving in the right direction. You see how close we sit to each other. That's also because uh, <laughs> there is a regulation uh, that is just a couple of days old. That because we are a group of actors and dancers, we are allowed to uh, like touch each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very exciting. We are very happy. Uh, not that we can touch each other, but that we can actually <laughs> uh, rehearse together oh, and uh, not worry about this meter and a half thing, uh, which is kind of became 
our new reality here and probably will stay that way outside of the working space. But, uh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I know, uh, obviously, there are some musicians who kind of depended on this club, you know, specifically mm -hmm. for, for their income, right? So they're obviously really struggling. Yeah. Now, now, of course, they have to adapt in some way. They can still yeah. use the space. And you see mu musicians on different social platforms uh, adapting in, in different ways to try mm -hmm. to generate some revenue. But, yeah, I mean, the situation right now is people can't, I mean, you can't open, right? Your doors no, can't, and, can't, uh, can't even put anything that's remotely live. Yeah. So you can't even put uh, like comedy, theatre, music, nothing. Um, and they even went as far as saying you can't even put background music loud. Uh, because people will talk. Like exactly. They're know. saying that people do talk and become cheery. It will, you know, cause uh, the virus to spread. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just kind of waiting on, yeah. on, on advice, essentially. Yeah. So we're very lucky to be able to like participate, like gather mm -hmm. everyone together yeah. in such a, like, a virtual theatre. And in, so many people work together. I would mm -hmm. never imagine I would have this yeah. chance to join. And, and I have to put a special mention to the Music Venue Trust who help support uh, musicians and particularly the venues, because the venues are there to support, provide a platform for these freelance musicians. And um, I couldn't have done it without the support mm -hmm. from the Music mm -hmm. Venue Trust, which is how you yeah, what yeah. found us um yeah. so it's all thanks to to the, the team over there and uh, i can't be any more grateful than that yeah. so yeah 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 guys Bye. before we go to the next part of the show uh we are we need to cut back away from you for a second because in the whole mess in the beginning you cut the the sound connection with us so if you would start playing now we won't hear uh, it very well so we came up with a little idea we will uh, go to the uh, a little f a video and we will try to communicate with you in between and ask you and give you a chance to restore your uh, sound connection the one you know when we we started talking there was uh, something going on and apparently uh, that's going to make it difficult for us to play a second part which you were planning to play right yeah. Sure, yeah, we have the, the Jay-Z, the Jay-Z or the Jay-Z? Yeah. Either or. Well, wherever you're from, guys, we have the Jay-Z replacement uh, who are going to play uh, a live set for the last 10 minutes. So, yeah, we'll, we'll kick off with that when we fix the issues. Cool, and if Beyonce wants to join, we wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we are going to cut away for our film just in order to keep communicating with you until we, we fix the technical, technical problem. problem and then from there we will uh, get back to you.